All right, in 5.2, uh, talking about what the book calls descriptive statistics, um, and a lot of this, at least in the first half, is going to be prior knowledge, um, at least hopefully. So we're going to start with what we call measures of central tendency, um, and that is just what we refer to as kind of our catch-all term for mean, median, and mode. So uh, mean, hopefully we all remember, um, but we have two ways of notating this. We can either use this x bar we call um, and that's going to be used if we're talking about the mean of a sample or it's going to be the Greek letter mu and we're going to use that if we're talking about a population right so just to kind of clarify again right this is what we call x we read this as x bar and this is the Greek letter mu well regardless it's calculated the same way. You probably remember that we're going to take the sum of the values in our data set and divide by the number of values in our data set. Right? For example, if I had numbers, I don't know, like 2, 4, 6, and 7, well, the average of that would be, let's see, whatever 19 divided by 4 is. So it's going to be, what, 4 and 3 quarters? So we're, you know, we're used to that version of the definition. We're going to update this a little bit more. Um, and the book gives us this monstrosity over here. Um, so it's saying the same thing, though, right? This sum of all my f i x i's is just my sum of all the values. And n is the number of values. More specifically, right, this f sub i is the frequency of whatever the ith um, unique data point is. And that ith unique data point is x sub i. So I'll explain what that means in a minute. Um, if we're dealing with I shall I'll stick with the same color. If we're dealing with grouped data, so we're talking about some sort of interval, kind of like the example that you see below, right? This would be some kind of interval of data, right? All of the data, all the people that fall in this 18 to 25 age range. We're going to use the middle value. Um, of the interval. For our x sub i, for our data value. So, with my example down here, I've got my age ranges and my frequencies. Well, so my mean is going to be the sum of all of my frequencies times their corresponding data value divided by the number of data values. Well, I've got intervals here, so I need to use whatever our middle value is, and I'm just going to take a quick um, a quick average of those. So 18 and 25 is 43 divided by 2 is what, 21 and a half. And then between 26 and 40 is 33. And then between 41 and 50 is 44 and a half. 45 and a half, 45 and a half. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply all of my frequencies times their respective value. So I have 114 times 33, and then I have 97 times 45 and a half. I'm going to divide by the total number of values, which is going to be 1, 4, 341. So whatever that works out to be on my calculator is going to be my mean. So this is maybe a little bit new, right? We're used to seeing our um, mean in terms of just add up all the numbers and divide by the number of numbers. Um, so this is a little bit different. 
This is actually more akin to what we would call a weighted average. Um, and my average here is, my mean here is 32.2. So mean, straightforward, just a little bit new. Um, median, again, you also might be familiar with as just being the middle, right? The middle value. So we'll say it's the value in the middle position. Oops. When data is arranged by size. So I'm going to order all these and then I'm going to find the one in the middle. So the book wants to update this a little bit and to say if I have um, an odd number of terms, so that's what n is still, this is still my number of terms. So when n is odd, then the median is going to be at the n plus 1 over 2 position. If I have nine numbers, the median is in the fifth position. And if I have an even number of terms, then the median is the average of whatever the n over 2 position is and the one next to it. Right, so n over 2 plus 1. So if there are eight terms, my average, my median is going to fall in between the fourth and fifth term. This is exactly what you're used to seeing, right? This isn't anything new. They're just writing it in a different way. Right, so this is not new information. This is exactly what you know. They're just writing it in a new way. So for example, here's my data set. Um, I'm going to start by putting this in order, right? I can't do anything with it until it's in order. So one... Two, two, three, four, 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 five, six. Well, I could do this two ways. I could just do what I'm used to doing, which is cross out highest and lowest and highest and lowest until I get to two terms in the middle. I take their average and I get three and a half. Or now with kind of my formal definition, I have an even number of terms here, so I actually could count. I have 10 terms. Um, my median lies at the average of the fifth and sixth terms. So if I go one, two, three, four, five, and six, same thing. I take the average of those two numbers. Um, we're stating it in a different way. But median is still nothing new. Um, and actually later I'm going to show you how to do this on your calculator. And then mode, of course, as we remember, is just whatever the most frequent value is. So in my data set above, I actually have two modes, and that's okay. So most frequent value or values. So here I actually have two modes, and that's two and four. Both of those appear three times. We also have measures of dispersion. Um, and again, some of this actually might be familiar to you, um, especially range. So range is the one that should be familiar. And remember that range is defined by taking the highest value in my data set and subtracting my lowest value in my data set. This just gives me a really simple measure of how spread out the data is. Of how spread out data is. And we call that dispersion, hence measures of dispersion. Um, for quartiles, now this is where it might be new, which is why I highlight it in, um, in a different color. Quartiles allow me to break down this dispersion even farther and maybe be a little more specific with it. So quartiles are going to separate the data into four sections. So we have quartile one, quartile 2, quartile 3, quartile 4. So quartile 1, and we'll do this in a different color, has 25% of the data below it. We can also think about this if we were to think about like my whole, like here is all of my data, right? Here is the median. Here is the lowest value. 
quartile 1 is here. So it is kind of the median of the lower half of the data in a lot of ways, right? It's if I take about if I take just the first half of the data and find the median there, that's quartile 1. Quartile 2 is exactly the same as the median. And this is where I have 50% of the data below. All right, so the median is the same as Q2. Q3 is a lot like Q1 except for the upper half. So we have 75% of the data below it. This is the median of the upper half of the data. Right, here's my maximum. Q3 is right in the middle. Q4 is the same as the maximum. Right, all of the data is below Q4. So those are my four quartiles, and what that does is it gives me a better sense of how the, how exactly the data is spread out. Not just that it is spread out, but how specifically it is spread out. And there's something that we can do further with this, and that's to find what we call the interquartile range, um, or IQR. And the IQR is Q3 minus Q1. So we'll kind of see this in action in a minute. Um, and what this is going to allow us to do is it gives us a much more accurate picture of the spread. I'll show you why with this example below. So I've got my data set here. Um, and we're going to do a lot of work with the just by hand for now. So if I try to do this all by hand, I can find I can find the mean, right? I can add everything up. So I have 15, 16, 22, uh, 24, 28. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There are 10 data points. So as long as I added together correctly, I should have a mean of 2.8. I'm hoping I added correctly. Uh, 24, yeah, 28. Uh, I can find my minimum and my four quartiles. So my minimum is obviously zero. And then I can find the four quartiles. Well, to find the four quartiles, I need to rank this um, data in order. So let me do that first. I have zero, one, one, two, 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 three, three, four, ten. And I can go ahead, I can either count Actually, why don't we put that into practice, right? Using my definition from way up here. We have 10 terms, so the median is going to fall somewhere between the fifth and sixth terms. So actually, just to save myself some time, why don't we do that? One, two, three, four, five, and six. So obviously, the average of two and two is just two. So the median is two. And I can take that data and split it right in half and find the median sorry, find the first and third quartile. So the first quartile is going to be the median of the lower half of data, which is 1. And the third quartile, same idea, just with the other, uh, the upper half is 3. Q4 is my maximum, which is 10. So the range, just maximum minus minimum. I got 10 and my IQR is Q3 minus Q1, right, which is 3 minus 1, which is 2. So obviously the range is going to get very heavily influenced by both the 10 and the 0, especially the 10 because it's so outside of everything, right? Um, so we're really going to get influenced by that. Well, the IQR is not going to look at that. The IQR is just going to look at that, where the bulk of the data falls, right, and it seems like most of the data falls there. We have a nice low IQR, which tells us that the bulk of the data is pretty close together. Um, so because this gives us a more accurate picture, um, kind of ignoring extreme values, we call this resistant. I can actually do the same thing on my calculator. Um, a lot of times this will save us some time, and if you have the opportunity on a paper too, you might as well take um, advantage of it, right? So 
I'm going to enter all my data in by going to stat and then edit. And actually, I've already got some data in here from another problem I was doing. So I'm just going to arrow up to the name of the list. So L1, press clear and press enter. And now I can just enter in all of my data, one on a row. So I have two, I have 10, three, one, four, two, zero, two, three, one. So now I have all my data there um, and now I can actually compute with it. So I'm gonna go to stat and I'm gonna go over to calc this time. So I'm gonna go to calc and I'm only dealing with one variable. So I'm gonna use this one variable stats, enter. Um, actually, I have all my data into list one, so instead of list two, um, so you see all the L1, L2, L3 in my second commands, so I'm going to press second, L1. We don't have a list of frequencies, so we don't have to worry about that, and then we're going to press calculate. And it gives me all of the data that I need to know, and actually more than we already know right now. We're going to talk about a lot of this later. So my mean is 2.8, um, which we figured out, right? My n is my number of terms, so I have 10 terms here. So the sum of all the terms is 28. The number of terms is 10, so the mean is 2.8. And then I have all of my quartiles here too. So minimum, q1, q2, q3, q4. Um, obviously bear in mind again that median is q2, max is q4. Um, the only thing it doesn't give you is the range of the IQR, so those you have to calculate um, for yourself. 